a series of internet-based lectures that are part of a seminar course called Science, Technology, and Us. And I, you know me, and therefore, even in the title, I think you can figure out where we're going in this course. We want to introduce our students, our faculty, our staff, and, and friends into the community to people like you who are doing science on the cutting edge in such a way and in such topics or areas that they're affecting our lives and are going to have enormous effect on our lives and society in the future. So it's an honor to have you with us today. The, uh, I'm going to welcome class and welcome guests of Cumberland. I want to read you uh, something about this remarkable lady, this remarkable scientist and this friend. And then I'm going to turn it over to her and she will lead us through a uh, journey into nanotechnology and tissue engineering via the internet and in particular uh, a uh, PowerPoint that uh, I will be pushing the buttons on this end, but she'll say push on that end and I'll respond. Uh, Dr. Lakshmi Nair is Assistant Professor of Orthopedic Surgery at the University of Virginia. She's from Trivandrum. How's that, Lakshmi? Trivandrum. Say it one more time. Trivandrum. Trivandrum, India where she studied at the very well-known Kerala University, receiving a bachelor's, master's, and an MPhil in chemistry, and then analytical chemistry, and then polymer science. She received her doctorate in biomaterials from the Sri Chitra Triunal Institute for Medical Sciences. Is that close? Yeah, no, close. All right, well, I get an A today. Medical Sciences and Technology. Finally, she did her postdoctoral training at Drexel University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I met Dr. Nair at Drexel, where she was a key scientist in the nano, what I would call the nano biomaterials research group led by Dr. Cato Lorenzen. Dr. Lorenzen moved to the University of Virginia, where he's chairman now of orthopedic surgery, and Dr. Nair is an assistant professor. By the way, congratulations on that move and that honor, Dr. Nair. <laughs> Thank you so much. Dr. Nair's laboratory now develops a range of novel, stimulus-sensitive hydrogels, and that's a mouthful and she can explain it, based biomaterials for soft tissue regeneration. Now think about that. Soft tissue regeneration and, nav and novel fabrication technologies to form nanostructures for a variety of biomedical applications. Now that's what she does. Now let me brag her on, on her again. More than 75 referee publications, several patents in the area of biomaterials, nanotechnology, and tissue engineering. She's edited two books on biomedical nanotechnology. And she's developed, now this is interesting, a completely online graduate level course on biomedical nanotechnology through the Commonwealth Graduate Engineering Program and the participating universities, which include UVA, Virginia Tech, College of William and Mary, George Mason, <coughs> Virginia Commonwealth, and Dr. Nair, let's get Cumberland on that, on that list. I want to offer that course here. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Lakshmi Nair to Cumberland University today to speak on the topic of nanotechnology and tissue engineering. Dr. Nair. Thank you, Dr. Eden. Uh, I would like to also thank Dr. Eden for having me to part of this wonderful program. Uh, today I'm going to talk about nanotechnology and tissue engineering, two emerging areas of science that will significantly change how we practice medicine in the future. Uh, coincidentally, this week, nation is celebrating this week as the nanotechnology week, so it's kind of a, a, my pleasure to talk about nanotechnology. So, the next slide. First slide, please. Okay. So, I will first start with an introduction of tissue engineering, and then I will talk about how.
how nanotechnology is going to improve the tissue engineering strategy. Next slide, please. Okay. So, failure of loss of tissue or organ can happen due to several reasons. It can be due to trauma, it can be due to diseases such as cancer, it can be due to birth defects. Statistics show that more than 50 million procedures are happening every year in the U.S. alone to uh, correct these problems. So let's look at what the current strategy is. So it depends on the type of injury. If the injury, the body of the injury by itself, then application of certain drugs can take care of the condition. And if that's not the case, for example, in case of critical defects where the body can be the defect by itself, then we have to go for either synthetic replacement, such as metal, metallic alloys, polymers, or ceramics, or biological grass, such as autograss and other grass. Synthetic replacement, as I said, they are non-degradable, so that they are going to be permanent in your body, and they significantly improve the quality of life of many patients. But however, their performance is definitely inferior compared to biological grass. The reason why because the body will never accept those grafts and so the patient has to undergo radiation surgery in, a, in another five or ten years. In the case of biological grafts, as I said, it's much, more, much better than synthetic replacement. There are two different types, autograft and autograft. Autograft the tissue taken from your own body, so the surgery, and take a piece of bone from one part of your body and put it in the other side. So that's an autograft. And allograft is a tissue that's taken from another person, may usually cadaver. So the biological graft being like biological tissue perform very well compared to synthetic replacement. However, they also have serious limitations. For example, in the case of autograft, donors are more risky because you have to undergo a second surgery to isolate the tissue. And also limited availability because you cannot give a lot of tissue from other part of your body to correct the problem. In the case of autograft, poor integration because it's not a tissue, so your body is going to reject it at some point. So poor integration and potential immunological reaction is a serious problem. So it means that, in short, current strategies are not optimal for treating critical side defects. Next slide, please. 